Okay, so what's about to happen now? I'm really excited because today is payback for Drew. Most of you will remember that Drew Ryan played me in a little horse game when we were up at Boston College and he was uh, beating me. So today is all about payback. Can't wait. Uh, Coach Park called me in the morning and wanted me to uh, go down early for film, just like any other film session, make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, he assigned me a specific seat, which was kind of unique, but uh, he made up some reason for why, so I believed him. Um, and uh, so then the girls came in about 10 minutes later, and uh, Coach B gave her a normal pre-film speech, you know, get them in the right mindset. And then Coach Park said he wanted to uh, show them something. To win tournaments, you've got to be, you've got to have a certain uh, ability of toughness to you. We've done a fun job with uh, toughness videos. Um, so the fun thing sometimes then is to, you know, switch things up and, you know, you, you need to be tough, but at the same time, you need to be tender. And everybody's tenderness, you know, what are you talking about, what are you talking about? And then we see this, this um, film come up on the screen. So, um, I hope you like it, uh, I think it's pretty good. <clears throat> so we showed him a clip, and the clip was uh, when I proposed to my girlfriend. How do I think I did for the proposal? Well, uh, Alyssa, my fiance, said uh, that it was great. Um, I spent a lot of time preparing and planning, um, and everything came out perfect, but there was uh, a lot of us behind it, you know, her best friend Heather and, and her family and my family, so I think it came out really well. Um, the, the girls were surprised with the video because they didn't know I was engaged. Um, uh, and my thinking behind that was just because it, it's tournament time and uh, you know, didn't, didn't want to bring any distractions, wanted them to be focused on the games. Two weeks ago, right after the ACC tournament, I flew out to Seattle and surprised my girlfriend, now fiance, and proposed to her in Seattle, Washington. Oh. Oh, oh very touching, very heartfelt, uh, reminded me of uh, something my wife sees on uh, Hallmark or Lifetime. Reenactment, reenactment. Okay. Oh, oh. Uh oh, now they're going to show you what it was like. Oh my god, Drew, what are you doing here? Oh my god. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> He, uh, he was thoughtful enough to bring our family out, which you know for women is important to have their mothers there. And, um, you know, did a great job surprising her. It looked like it was a, a great day for her, which is what it's about. It's about the woman, right? So. Who the family, the family, the family. I told him it was great for her, that if he thought that all on his own, that for a guy, I go, I hope that, you know, I have find somebody like that. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how it went down. <laughs> that was great. That was almost perfect. That was great. That was really good. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to rock this place. We're going to rock this place. That's You're it. the turtle, buddy. That's it. He's got one too. Right, That's my see. friend. Does she really have to be feared? Yes, and so do I. My name's Brenda also. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Edward Simpson. I'm Arissa Coleman's coach from uh, St. John's College High School. Well, I'm extremely proud. I've been traveling, following her, you know, just because she's uh, made my heart happy. You know, one of the first kids out of St. John's to ever win a national championship as well as a uh, ACC championship. making their third trip to the Elite Eight in the last four years, trying to make their second trip to the Final Four in the last four years. All right, you go out. You go out, you mark your territory, right? You go mark your territory when, when you get out there. We need every single one of you ready to play. Players, coaches, support staff, everybody's got to be ready to play, all right? And if you got to, if you got to go eat their kids, hey, you go do it! <laughs> That's so gross. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go! Three-pointer from Meredith Marshall the other end and it's good. 
All the momentum's just been sucked out of the Terps. I don't know what it is. We, we came out and we said we were going to come out with a lot of energy, but they, they came out and you know they they out uh, hustled us. They were they were tougher than us. There, Maryland really does not look to be in any sort of rhythm. Worth three pointer, good. Timeout, Brenda Freeze. We are so out of sorts right now. You got to find it. You got to collectively calm yourselves down and get together as a team. All right, there's no excuse for us not to be on the same page. Maryland is down by 18. I think we weren't quite aware of just how tough they were going to be and how good they were. For, for all far corner, Meredith Marsh. Marsh inside, it goes to Whisper. Count the basket and the foul. The great thing, if you thought in that first half that you were going to play a perfect game, now you don't have to worry, right? All right, now you don't have to worry. Okay, so now we can go out in the second half and we can play. We can play the Maryland way. Okay, we can play the Maryland way. Hey, yo, they played their best half. We yep. played our worst. Yeah, yep. exactly. There you go. This team, we're never out of the game and we're never going to give up. We're going to do everything possible, whether we're up 20, down 20, to win a basketball game. Eight on the shot clock. Coleman pulls up three pointer. Good! Nothing but that! You know, as, as a senior, I, I don't want my career to end with anything less than a national championship, and I'm going to do whatever it takes, whether it's leading this team, rebounding, defending, or, or scoring, to, to help us get to, to the Final Four and win another national championship. And I was screaming, compete, and utter rubbish. Like, um, I didn't come all the way from London to lose in the Sweet 16. Coleman driving towards the basket. Up off the glass, and it's good! Around Meredith Marsh, timeout Vanderbilt! Time out, Vanderbilt! Marissa, she really put us on our back today. She carried us all the way through the finish, and you know, you can do nothing but commend her for that. She's such a competitor. Good job, White! Yes! Good job! She just went out there and just played her hardest and left it all on the court because she knows that any moment could be her last time playing with us, so she went out there and just played hard. Coleman drives inside, layup is good, and the foul is called! Marissa's will to win is just uncanny. I can't even describe it. It's, I don't know, it's like something when we get down or when she knows that we need a spark, it's like something inside of her goes off and she just gives us whatever we need. We have, have grown up a lot. I think that, you know, early on in our careers, had we been down by the margin we were down by today, I'm not sure if we would have the confidence or the, or the ability to, to pull it out and keep that composure. Coleman, far side, driving towards the basket, into the paint, pull-up jumper, good! 40 for Marissa Coleman! As impossible as it sounds, she actually got a quiet 42 points, as in she just, it was silent. You looked up one minute, she had like four, and you looked up and she had 42. Vanderbilt with the ball, 20 seconds to go. Risper up top to Worth. Worth drives inside, guarded by Coleman, gets it open, no good! Jumpers go good! It's rebounded by Coleman and a foul is called! Christina Worth called for her fourth foul, and Marissa Coleman will go to the line with a chance to ice it. I, I knew she was having a phenomenal game, but you know it wasn't until like the last minute when she was getting ready to shoot her last free throw, I looked up and um, saw that she had 41 points, and I was like, oh my gosh. From Marissa Coleman, it's good. She's got 41 points. 77-74, Marissa Coleman can make it a two possession game with less than 10 seconds to go. From a player who already has 41 today, are you really that surprised? For Marissa Coleman, it's good. 42 for Coleman and the Terps lead by four. Less than 10 seconds to go. It goes into Rhodes across midcourt. Six seconds, five seconds. Rhodes to Worth, Worth three pointer off the iron. No good, rebound is loose. That's it, game is over. Maryland survives. Maryland has survived! Are you kidding me? Wow, are you kidding me? There's not an adjective to describe Marissa Coleman's performance. Putting this team completely on her back. 42 points, 15 rebounds, and the Terps are playing on Monday night. Wow. <laughs> and may arguably the best game for anyone that's put on a Maryland Terrapin uniform in Maryland Terrapin women's basketball history, not NCAA tournament history, Maryland women's basketball history, is Marissa Coleman just completely took over. It didn't matter who defended her. She, they threw all kinds of defenses at her, and she handled it with stride. And what else can you say? 15 for 27 for the game, 10 for 11 from the free throw line.
She's our emotional leader. She's been all year, and you know she wants to keep playing. This is this is it. And uh, I mean, man, I don't know if I've ever seen a performance like that. You know, we could have folded so many times, but we stayed together, and we didn't play our best basketball. So it's good to know that it can, we can play our best on Monday. I gotta check. Did you check your pulse to make sure we won that one? Did you check it? I mean, gutsy, gutsy performance by all of you. Way to have each other's back. Phenomenal job. Really excited for the kids. You know, uh, it's it's a great feeling to watch uh, Marissa Coleman and Christy Tolliver, two kids that you know I helped recruit to the program, be as successful as they've been. Uh, it's just a unique situation. And, uh, when we played at Georgetown, three fourths of their team came to our game. You know, and I, I had the chance to see them there, and it was great to see them. And now for things to come full cir a circle and for us to be playing each other in a, in a Elite Eight game with a chance to go to the uh, Final Four, it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of a storybook. So it, it's been fun. It's been great. I've, I've been excited for those kids. It, it's going to be a great game tomorrow night and uh, exciting to have a chance to coach against them. No, I think it's going to obviously be an exciting matchup, and obviously in your coaching career you don't get to uh, spend much time as coaches when um, someone works with you then is able to move on and become their own head coach. So, you know, obviously two teams that know each other extremely well. Yeah, it's, it's funny to see him on the sideline up, you know, him just, you know, calling out Mad Dog, you know, a play that we used to have. It's just funny that he still uses the same stuff. They know me well. I was kind of the bad guy at times uh, in the program. You know, I was the one that had to push the kids and get on them and demand things from them. And, uh, you know, it's just, uh, it's a good relationship. You know, like I've tr I told him when I was there, you know, what happens on the floor stays all on the floor. I care about him afterwards. I still care, I still care about him. And, uh, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's going to be fun to play against them tomorrow. But as soon as the ball gets thrown up and the horn sounds, it's going to be two teams try, trying to win. It's not going to be Christy Tolliver and Marissa Coleman against me. You know, I, I saw him a couple of times, you know, just got, can't help but notice him. It's going to be fun to play against him on Monday. You know, obviously with him coaching here, it's going to be, you know, whoever comes out the win is going to have the bragging rights. I never want to have to play and compete against friends. So um, it's very... It'll be very exciting. Um, seeing him for the first time in a long time, it was you know neat to see him and get a chance to see his family and everything like that and just be able to say hello. But I, as I told him when I saw him, I go, we have to draw the line here because <laughs> enemy line. So you know it's us against them. So, but it was fun. pictures of Brenda. We have letters that spell out every girl's name. We have, um, as, they're introduced. as they're introduced, we're going to have the name spelled out. We have to sneak it in because the NCAA will not allow us to bring signs of any kind into the arena. That is why we're sneaking them in. It will not be just the three of us. We have, uh, com what are they, compatriots. We'd like to see them try to kick out 200 of us. <laughs> yes, we will kill you we if you let it you. out. Yes, we can. We have fingers yeah. <laughs> and we'll use them. <laughs> The head coach of the Maryland Terrapins in her seventh year with the Terps is Brenda Fries. See, we're getting ready for this game. The starting lineups are being announced to the fans in the stands. And with the Maryland starting lineups, here's Hal DeCorsi. And no surprises in the Maryland lineup, anchored by the ACC Player of the Year, the senior Christy Tolliver, team high 22 points per game. I mean, I told. I told the freshmen before the game, I, I said, you know, this the Elite Eight game is the toughest game to play in, in the tournament. Um, and, it, and it just showed again today. I mean, probably the worst half I've ever seen us play. Rebound! You need to bring your intensity and your energy for this basketball team. Go to the rim. Louisville's lead is up to nine. We're, we're not going to step up and make a free throw? You didn't go fight for it. You gave up in the first half. You didn't go fight for it. You didn't earn it. But the amazing thing is we're down five. We're down two possessions. 
two possessions. We're going we're gonna to go out with a lot of energy and, and, and put them away. We got to really go out there and mean it. We can't just say yep. it. We have to do it. Coleman, Coleman driving towards the basket, lays it up, and the foul is called. Flips it out to Strickland, inside to Kaiser, and Kaiser has her pocket picked. And as soon as Kaiser got the ball inside, she looked confused, she didn't know where to go with it, and 15 turnovers leading to the 19 Louisville points. Three-pointer by Becky Burke, and it's good. 58-44. We've let the pressure affect us in the last two games. At this time of the year, um, anything can happen and uh, for whatever reason you know we came down here to Raleigh and and uh, we didn't play our best basketball on the court not enough possessions in the game left no. you know what I'm saying it is really difficult when um, you know a game is over to keep coaching because I mean you know you have to try to get um, you know, your kids still need to understand we're going to fight till the bitter end. But, um, you know, I mean, we, we've all been in, in situations, uh, good and bad, and, and it's part of the game. Finish this, all right? Finish this, stand up. Finish. There's just not words that, that you can say to be able to console um, your players at, at that moment. You're all right, girl. You're all right, all right? You know, I mean, we, you know, just wanted to make sure that, um, that we were able to get, you know, Christy and Marissa the, you know, appropriate applause from um, all the fans and, you know, just wanted to have that moment. Hell of a career. You got nothing to cry about, all right? Hell of a career. You know, obviously with Christy to, um, you know, just help her through it, tell her what uh, an amazing, you know, career she had here. And uh, same thing with, with Marissa. Hell of a career. Hell of a career. You got nothing to cry about. <laughs> you look at this at her. You, you hear me? You have a hell of a career. You hear me? You're so proud of you. You're good. You're okay. You know, just one last time, um, you know, to, to thank our seniors for everything that they've meant to our program and, uh, you know, just, just to thank them. You know, you, you never want to see two great players like that leave such a program. Um, we look up to them. They're our big sisters on this team, and, you know, we never, never want to see them in that type of emotion, that, that you know, it's our type of emotion. And it's just, I mean, it hurts a lot. I didn't. I didn't want my my career to end end here. I wanted to attend in St. Louis on a high note. So it's it's extremely hard. And you know, my team has they've had Chris and I's back all season. They wanted this for us just as bad as we wanted it. And you know, they played extremely hard tonight. So I'm just I'm I'm happy I I got the time to spend with these girls this year. Coach Walsh just came over and you know I said you know I love you. He said this is one of the this is the toughest game that he's had to coach in coach against. Um, and then Angel said the same thing. I told her I said you know what you have nothing to hold your head down about. Uh, I said you're all American and you're going to be high draft pick. So you have everything to hold your head, head high about. And I just try to encourage her because I know how it feels. I know it's not a good feeling. So to try to give some words of encouragement. They're there when you when you need that phone call. When they're that phone call away. Um, it's, it's countless. It's countless what we learned from those two um, this year. All right. First of all, is we have two of the greatest seniors that, that could have provided leadership that we could have had. It was just really sad. As Coach B was talking, Marissa and KT just kept crying and crying. And I wanted to cry for them. I mean, obviously, I don't play, but. I'm just as much, you know, I, I have their, my heart's in it just as much as they are. And, and it was just, it hurt to hear them cry. <laughs> this is probably the first time I've seen KT cry this much ever in my life, and I've known her for a long time. So it was really hard to see both of them crying, and especially when Marissa almost collapsed, looked like she was going to collapse on the court. It was really hard for all of us, and I think it's going to take us a while to get over this. I think it's difficult because, you know, I don't think any of our words can ever um, express it enough just, you know, how much they mean to our program. And uh, it's hard in that moment. Right, but you remember the positives. You're leaving here as the all-time winningest class in the history that, uh, of anyone who's put on a Maryland uniform. From day one since you've stepped foot on campus, you believed. You believed to keep putting us in positions to be successful.
And I just want to take the time to thank both of you for what you've meant to, to, to Maryland women's basketball.